here's the hub then. Um, it's a very simple process. What we're going to do is get this off, this drive side end cap, by tapping it through from this side. Then we're going to drive the axle through from this side, so it'll extend out this side. We're going to wiggle off the free body, um, clean it all up inside, take the pulls off the free body, take the springs off the free body, clean out the ratchet, and then uh, put the free body back on, loop it up obviously, drive the axle back through from this side, check we have the correct amount of uh, washers on this side using the system we'll show you later and then push on this end cap that's it simple first you will need a very tiny flat blade screwdriver you can see how small that is next you will need some cassette body specific grease uh, for when you lube it all back up again don't use thick assembly grease in place of this because you'll knacker your hub, okay? Then you need to get an old rear quick release lever that you don't mind hitting with a hammer, like I've done here, all right? Um, this will get shagged, so don't hit a nice new one. Then get yourself to a really, really crap tool shop and get the cheapest, nastiest, you know, even broken, doesn't matter, plastic or nylon handled screwdriver. Um, as long as this part here is uh, larger than say 16 millimeters in diameter, get one of these. This cost me, I don't know, like a dollar. Okay, just what you're gonna do, you're gonna shape this into being the uh, axle punch uh, in place of spending loads and loads of money on the official tune one, um, you're gonna make your own, okay? And I'll show you how to do that later. So as cheap as you like, as long as the handle looks like it can take a bit of a whack on the end, just get whatever you can. If you don't have a file, get yourself to a drugstore and buy an, uh, one of these rough skin <laughs> removing foot scraper things, all right? It's got a bit of a rough surface on it. This cost me, again, like a dollar, okay? And you'll use this to uh, to shape the handle of your cheap, crappy screwdriver, all right? Then you need some, in Japan they're called wet tissues. These are alcohol impregnated wipes, all right? Uh, I'm sure you know what these are. These are for uh, cleaning everything up inside and getting it really, really, uh, shiny and new and nice. Next, you need some degreaser, proper degreaser. This is a, a spray-on degreaser. That says break and parts cleaner in Japanese. Um, get whatever you can in your local area, unless you, you know, uh, unless you have some already. As long as you can degrease the stuff with it, that's fine, all right? And that's it. Oh, hang on, <laughs> one more. You need a hammer. Get us a, a really heavy one, all right? One that you can really lay into the hub with. You won't break it, don't worry. Um, a heavier one is better than a light one because it takes less hits to achieve the result you want. Uh, this is a one or two kilogram, I think. Sorry, yeah, two kilogram hammer. Uh, wooden handle as well. Um, so you, we're going to reassemble the hub with this part and not damage anything. So yeah, get a nice hammer. Okay, so the first step is to get this drive side end cap off. Now we do this pretty basically, pretty roughly, by sliding the old skewer through until you feel it butting up against the inside of this here. Don't want it to go all the way through. Don't want it to come out like that, okay, because that won't do anything. It needs to sit up on the inside. Then you're gonna hold it with your hand and your thumb <laughs> out of danger's way, but so that it's, it's sitting up on the inside. Then you're gonna take your nice heavy hammer and deliver some solid blows onto there, which will tap this off. Okay, so I'll do that now.
it's coming off already. So that was really simple, really easy. We could probably even push it, there we go, with our hand. That's the end cap off. So that's step one finished. Now, as you can see in here, there are the washers. Uh, we need to take these out. Now, don't lose these uh, because you might better put it back together again properly. Okay, so use your very thin uh, screwdriver with a flat blade to pick these out gently. Keep them safe, okay? Okay, we've got the washers out. So you can see the bearing there. Now at this point, you are going to make your special tool from your cheap screwdriver, which is gonna sit in this end and drive the, uh, drive the axle all the way through. Okay, this is very simple. You don't need to measure anything. You just need to go by eye and feel. Get the cheap screwdriver, drop it into the axle, then feel with your fingers how far over the edge of the axle uh, outer circumference this is. This is slightly over, so what we'd need to do then is get our little cheap file and just sort of file this down until it is the right size. Now, obviously I have my own one, which I made earlier, made years ago in fact. Uh, this is mine. Now as you can see, I've, I've shaved it all the way off around here. When this sits in, I don't know if you can see that, it's about, well there you go, that, that's the size it should be. And this will allow you to drive it through the 17mm bearing, because this is smaller than 17mm, and then all the way down through the second bearing and the axle comes out the other end. So yeah, that's what you do, make your little cheap tool and uh, then we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, it's time to get the axle out. Now, there's a high chance that your hub will actually be still built into a wheel. So it's very easy for you. All you do is you put the, you sit on a chair, you put the whole wheel on your lap, uh, move, <laughs> move everything uh, out of the way, if you know what I mean, and then uh, just hit down with the hammer quite hard on the, uh, on the top of the screwdriver thing you've made, and then keep checking underneath it for movement and it will drive it through. Um, you want to get this axle through this first bearing and then you want to get it sort of halfway through the second bearing. Don't knock it all the way through um, because the free body will fall off and then the pawls might shoot everywhere. So you want to have basically half of the axle sitting in the, the second bearing down so that you can then manually wiggle the uh, free body off the last bit, keeping everything under control and not losing any bits, okay? So I'm gonna hit this one now off camera and then show you the process, how far through to go with it, all right? So that's after three hits of the hammer, that's gone through a bit. You can see the axles sitting slightly through the first bearing. We still need to drive it further through. Look underneath there, you can see the axle coming through. So yeah, just keep keep driving it down like this, and eventually that'll be in the right position. Once you've got the axle through enough to wiggle this off, uh, the process to wiggle this off is sometimes a little bit tight. Don't worry too much about that, just persevere with it, grasp it, wriggle it, turn it round, wriggle it again, and then eventually you'll hear the, uh, the pawls going tick, tick, tick as they come away from the, uh, the ratchet ring. Keep wriggling and then just slightly put a bit more force in as you get towards the end and then eventually it will, it will come off, okay? Okay, so as you can see, there's a small bit of axle sticking out the end. This is about as far as you wanna knock it through. So it gives you the ability to manually wriggle off the free body uh, without losing any parts. Now here is the free body with all the pulls and the leaf springs, the bearings, the drive, uh, drive ring and the O-ring as well. Now, for a basic service, you need to take these off, these pulls, by sliding them out. You need to take the leaf springs out by sliding them out, clean it all up around there, degrease it, put grease in them, in the seats, and put it all back together and slide it on. Of course, 
get all this area clean as well, clean inside the inner race. Do the same on the on this bearing here. If you want to get really into it, you can get a, a, a cotton bud and wipe all the way around inside if any, any junk that's come out of there. Have a look here as well, these little um, nicky sort of impact areas where the where the uh, cogs have dug in. These are often these are often raised, and they sometimes make it a bit hard for the cassette to come off. Get a file, not the uh, not the foot file, but a proper file, and file these until they're flat. This won't cause any problems, and it just means that when you slide the cassette on to put it all back together, it goes on properly. All right, so next we're going to show you how to take the pawls out and how to clean it properly. Okay, so getting the pawls out is a bit fiddly. What you need to do is first get the leaf spring out by getting this blade underneath it, like this, holding the whole thing steady and sliding and pushing up at the same time. It's a bit hard. Now, keep your finger on top because if this thing flies off and you lose it, well, you're stuffed. So, there we go. That's got it off. Okay, put this right down in front of you where you can see it where it's not going to vanish, okay? Because if you lose it, well, you ain't riding, are you? Okay, now this has reduced or removed all the tension from the pole, so that's flapping around now. Now what you can do is turn over the free body unit, get your screwdriver underneath the pole and just slide it down until it drops, okay? Again, <laughs> keep that safe, don't lose it. Do the same on all these, so two more. It's time to get your lovely wet tissues from the box. Take one out and just wipe all of the junk, all of the grime and all that crap off of it. Okay, until it's fully clean. Then you can inspect it to see if it's worn out or not because the ones and the pores on the tube wear out pretty quick. If you're noticing any wear on a certain section of it and then the edge is sort of looks like it's not been wearing out, it's time to replace the pulls because that uh, is a serious weakness of the tune hubs that the pulls do wear out very fast. And when you notice a groove starting to wear in where they've been lifting over the edge of the ratchet ring, that means that there's a high chance they're gonna snap fairly soon. Um, check out my other video for evidence of this. So if you're seeing any, you know, what you consider to be extensive wear, and then obviously if the edge of the tooth has sort of got a divot here or anything's looking a bit weird, Get, just order some new poles, okay? Um, do it sooner rather than later. Again, clean the uh, clean the leaf spring up as well. Get that all clean, and then go into the seats. So the leaf spring seat and the uh, pole seat. Clean it all out. Go really go really well into this. Get your finger in there. You might need to get the little screwdriver and then use that to, to angle it in to get it perfectly clean. Spend a bit of time on this, get it perfect. Once you've done that, clean all around the bearings as we said and uh, you, what you, you could take the drive ring off by just pushing it with your fingers. I mean you can, it takes a bit of effort. If it's really dirty I'd recommend taking it off. You can easily take, easily, you can easily take the uh, o-ring off and give that a clean underneath as well um, depending on how dirty it is but it, it doesn't hurt again this is a simple uh, uh, a basic service so we're not going to be replacing the bearings that's for another video but if your bearings are extremely rough so you put your finger in there and it's sort of going D -d -d -d, and you can you know it's making all sorts of noises and it's horrible check out the other video about how to replace bearings in hubs and uh, do that okay but for now we're just going to do the basic service once you've wiped all the parts down with your alcohol impregnated uh, tissue wipe things, um, the next step is to use a proper degreaser to get it really clean. So spray some of your degreaser, like this stuff, on a cloth. Don't spray it directly on it. Spray it on a cloth and wipe all the parts down. Um, try to keep degreaser away from this rubber seal here because this rubber seal, even though it's got a seal, isn't 100% sealing, okay? Clean all in here. What you can do is you can get some cotton buds, spray the end of the cotton bud and, and start poking around in here to get it all clean. Clean all these edges down. Clean the thread on the inside here. 
clean the inside races of the bearings. Again, don't try to try to keep it off of the uh, the rubber seals. Clean that race in there. Get it all nice and and degreased and, and shiny and clean. So it's the hub shell now to get cleaned. Um, the axle you can take it all the way out if you like, and then clean all the way inside the hub shell. It's really up to you. I don't do it in a general service, but if you feel like you need to, you can just tap it all the way through and uh, clean out the inside there. It's really up to you. Um, if you're gonna take the bearings out again, um, there's gonna be another video for that. So if you have to do that, go to that video, do that, and then get the axle back in and then continue cleaning like this. Um, this is the tooth ring. So you can see it's, hmm, the angles in here kind of attract dirt dirt gets stuck in there very easily that all the gunk you can see in there actually isn't gunk that's grease because this is a clean hub but when you take yours apart it's going to look pretty pretty nasty in there and it'll be just black and there'll be you know soot all over it or whatever first step then get your wet tissues or your you know what the alcohol impregnated wipes clean out as much of the grit and grime as possible you know use as many tissues as you like get it out get all the all the the, the sort of the dirt out right then Go at it with your degreaser. Now, these teeth on here, dirt gets in the in this bit here a lot. Okay, so as laborious as it may seem, you might need to scrape out each one all the way around. Now, yeah, it's going to take you a bit of time, and it'd be annoying if you forget where you started. Um, so keep an eye on which spoke hole you went, maybe even put a bit of black tape on there, go the way around, then you're done. When you are ready to reassemble with the free body, get your cassette grease and squirt it all in there, all around, and, and smear it around with your finger before we put the uh, free body back on, because if you forget that, <laughs> and then you tap the axle through, you're gonna take it apart again, which is a pain in the ass. Okay, so grease it up nicely. Again, don't go mental, but put a good amount on there. So to reassemble, you just do it in the opposite order that you took it apart. First thing, you need to get some of your lube, cassette body lube, not this heavy stuff like finish line or, or assembly grease, just a, a proper thin cassette lube. Squirt some in here, squirt some in here. Now the first thing to get back is actually the leaf spring. Now, the way you do it, is the bottom loop here, not the open bit, the bottom bit sits against the free body. Don't do it this way, all right, because the spring won't work properly. Do it that way. I've got some grease in there already, as you can see. Now, the way you do it is you, I mean, it's a bit hard to do on camera, but you hold it and just squeeze, squeeze it together, push it in, and then push it down until it's sort of in position. Getting the pull in is a sort of, you know, an octopus job. I wish you had more than two hands. Push the leaf spring in with your thumb, hold it in position, and then get that in there. Right, you see what's happened. You might need to get a tool and push this down. There you go, and, and then it sits in there properly. Okay, that's in position. Do the same on these ones, let's assume they're out. Um, and then make sure you've got a nice, a nice amount of lube in there. Don't go crazy with the lube, but you know, get it in there, okay? So that's the free hub taken apart, cleaned, reassembled. Time for reassembly then. To reassemble, uh, you need the axle to be sitting about there, okay? So that's uh, three or four mil out, okay? Don't have it any further in, and don't have it sticking you know, an inch out. It needs to be about there, okay? Then what you need to do is make sure you've greased all of this. Put a bit of grease on the on the outer faces of the poles. Then, this is a bit fiddly, make sure that your uh, leaf springs are pressed all the way in. Make sure your, your poles are pressed all the way down. You don't want them popping off when you do this. You go in with the first pole. You need to sort of touch that into the ratchet first. You can feel it click, and then you can see how fiddly this is. Get your little tool and 
push the second one in, find the third one, push the third one down, and there we go. You will do it a lot more elegantly than I just did it because you don't have a camera sat between your face and the what you're trying to touch, but you get my drift. Now, if we look down the inside, you can see that the axle has gone into the inner race of the inside bearing on the free body. If we hold this down quite hard and turn it round, you can see that it's engaged, that's good. If you do this and you feel it's not in the right position, just take it off, reassess it and try again, okay? Now, this next part is actually pretty simple, pretty brutal, pretty simple. Hold it in, don't let it drop off. Hold it like this, you can see. Now obviously if this is, if this is built into a wheel, um, you have to do it in a slightly different way, or you get your hands all the way around the wheel, but that's how you do it. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna tap it in like that. Use the wooden handle on the heavy hammer and just knock it through. Once you've got it through and out the other side of the, the inner bearing race, you can take your hand off this because it's safe, really. Okay, so I'll try and do this on camera. I'm just gonna reach for my hammer. Hang on. All right. So what you do is you come in from this side and you just bang it in like that. There we go, that's gone through slightly. Now, let's have a look here. Okay, yeah, you can see the axles come through the first bearing race. and yeah, it's still in position and it hasn't moved out. If it does move out, push it back with your hand, hold it really, really tight and then tap it in. Um, the next step then, um, which you can figure out yourself I'm sure, is you are going to knock this all the way in until this race, this uh, end cap is sat right up against this bearing. The axle will, stop, will come through this here and sit out the end. Okay, I'm gonna do this off camera. Um, I'll show you when I'm finished. Okay, that's all back together then. The end cap is pressed up nicely. I tapped it a few times, then tapped around this edge here, not with the metal part of the hammer, with the with the handle, which is wood, because if you hit it with the metal, you're gonna, you're gonna knacker it. Tapped it so that I felt that that was sat in properly, and then tapped this one again, you know, tapped this one again until it, I felt that it was all completely compressed. The, the bearing's turning nicely. There's no, in fact, they're really smooth. There's nothing going on there. That's working properly. Now, the next stage is we're going to measure this system here and the end cap and see if the number of washers that Tune have given us is correct using their uh, convoluted um, evaluation system, which I will explain, okay? So the next step is you are going to get your end cap, which you haven't lost, and these two washers here or three or one or whatever they've given you okay now i did lie at the start of the video um if you want to do this stage and don't want to just trust tune to have done it properly which there have been a lot of cases where they haven't given you the right amount of washers so i do urge you to do that you need some vernier calipers what's vernier calipers that is a set of vernier calipers these are cheap they're not digital they're just slidey metal ones okay if you don't have these well get some if you want to do this step or just ignore this step and just hope for the best, okay? So if you want to do this step, the first thing you do is you get the end cap and you measure the depth on the inside edge like that. Now, let's have a look. That's gonna, we'll measure that down there. Okay, that is, we can see there, 8.5. Five, 8.5, so let's all remember 8.5, okay? Then we're going to measure the amount of axle sticking out. So go right to the bearing race edge, measure down. And that is nine, nine point One five, nine point one five. 
So 8.5, so 9.15 minus 8.5 is 0.65, okay? Now, 0.65 minus 0.2 is 0.45. Therefore, the amount of washes here should be 0.45, okay? The reason you take 0.2 off is because that's the amount of uh, bearing play before you clamp it all together with your skewer. Okay, so point these they should be 0.45. So let's measure this. This one is 0.45. So you're probably quicker than me at this. Uh, point. Point two. That should be point two five, right? That one's point two. Okay, so we're point five out, right? So <laughs> tune haven't given us the right amount of washes. So to fix this issue, we'd need to add another washer to this. We'd need to add a 0.5 washer so there you go they don't always do it right now the other thing that it could be is that it was right when they fitted all the hub together in the factory but through usage the bearings have you know can, have, have, have been pushed further together due to the you know my extreme power that i put through the, the hub um you know it's settling in or whatever so so there you go Imagine you've got all the right amount of bearings. What you would then do is you put some lube on there, your cassette grease again, nice and light, drop them on like that. Get the uh, get the end cap, put some grease in there, and then just with your fingers, I'm probably not going to do this now, bam, that's it. And that, my friends, is how you service a Tune Mag 170 hub.